everyone, and welcome to the 19th episode of the Peeking Penny Podcast. Uh, today is May the 4th, and I'm coming to you from Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as Pippin Pin, on Ravelry as Knit Pippin Pin, and in the Ravelry group, Pippin Pin. I, today is, I, I have a couple of finished things to show you which is always very exciting. <laughs> and then two new, um, two new cast-ons as well. Um, but first, I'm going to start with some knit-along news. Um, I am hosting the Pip and Pin knit-along over um, on Ravelry. And basically, what you do to enter is you use a Pip and Pin pattern, take a photo of it, and then use the hashtag Pip and Pin K-A-L-18 and that's your entry. Um, and once a month, uh, I do a prize draw. And so this is going for the whole year. And so last night I did the prize draw for April. And that was for a set of these guys. Oh, and they're all tangled. You won't really be able to see them anyways. But a set of those guys. Um, just some little julie stitch markers that i make and you can find those on in my etsy store which is pip and pin which doesn't have a lot in it but it does have some of these um and as well as a copy of our upcoming pattern carson which i'll put a picture of here <laughs> and so i've used a number number random a random number generator and the April's winner was Sarah, who is uh, busty underscore ruffles. And yeah, she's from Abbotsford, which is also really cool. Um, we actually have known each other for, for many, many years, and she just recently started knitting or just recently started getting into knitting things. And so she's working on a um, Madeira Park. And that's what she posted a picture on. And it's her first shawl and her first lace project. So congratulations, Sarah. And I'll send those to you soon. Um, I do have a prize for May. But I'm going to wait a little bit to talk about that. I'll probably talk about that at the end um, because it was sent to me. And I want to take a little bit of time to talk about it. <laughs> I guess I'm just going to go into finished objects and I am wearing one of them. This is uh, the April Fool Shawl by Melissa Stadja, and I haven't stopped wearing it. Um, well, that's a lie. I have because it was really hot last week, but <laughs> I pretty much every day that it's been cloudy and appropriate, I have been wearing it. It is probably one of my favorite things that I've knit. It's really comfy to wear and I will show you what it is. <laughs> so it is this guy and it is a shawl that's worked end to end. So it's actually folded right now. I guess I should unfold it. <laughs> this is it. It's kind of massive, but that's why I love it as well. Um, so you work end to end. So you start over here with the eyelets and then you just keep increasing, 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 increasing until you reach halfway point. And then you begin your decreasing and your stretching. Um, what I really love about it is how it falls. Like I really, um, I like uh, fingering weight shawls, but if they're not massive, they don't stay on me. <laughs> and um, they're, they're just so light. Um, what I really like about this is you wear it folded over. Uh, so it does have that extra bit of fabric without like DK weight charles are kind of are heavier. I don't know. It's hard to explain why it's so brilliant, but it is. Also, these tassels. These tassels are amazing. Um, I've never really put tassels on anything before but I think I'm going to start doing them because they're just they're so fun and you can't really tell but like this one I did 
more of the um, solid color in there. And then this one, I did more of the speckly color. And then these two, I kind of did half and half. But unless you're me, you won't be able to tell that. <laughs> it was fun anyways. Um, I also like them because they keep it on better. Like they weigh it down a little bit. So yeah, one of my um, favorite things that I've that I've made, um, for sure. There we go. And just one of those, one of those shawls that you just throw on and it looks good. <laughs> you don't have to like fiddle with it, which is something else that I really, really appreciate. Um, the yarns that I use are these two here. And another thing that I really love about this pattern is you use up quite a bit of your yarn. Um, so I think I had two skeins of this, which is Sweet Fiber, um, Super Sweet Sock. I'll put it back here so that I don't blow it out. Super Sweet Sock, um, and Ochre, which is this lovely golden tonal, I don't know, probably one of my favorite colors right now. And then, um, this is Six and Seven Fiber Milo in I'll Teach the Lot, and it's like yellow and kind of peach, and there's these dark speckles, and then it also has bits of this ochre color in it. So I thought those would go uh, very nicely together. And I think I was right. <laughs> I really like the effect. The striping was really fun. Like the, the eyelets were really fun because they're, they're bigger um, than you would normally do an eyelet. So I couldn't really recommend it enough. <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like I have some... I have some lichen in lace in like in the faded rose and some plucky knitter that's also this like pink kind of speckly one and so I'm thinking I might need a pink one now. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just two thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> and the second finished object that I have is, are these? And these are my blueberry waffle socks and they're both finished and for some reason they took me no time at all I think I I don't remember exactly how far along I was last time because it's been a little while um since I did podcast but I know I was quite I think I was finished one of them um the oh did I mention these are the blueberry waffle socks by Sandy Turner and I did modify them to be uh, fingering weight. So I did 64 stitches and then I started the patterning and then I kind of just made up my own heel flap and gusset, which is, I'm just gonna keep doing heel flap and gusset from now on. <laughs> I really like doing afterthought heels and things, but um, these just fit so nicely. And even though it's getting into spring and I don't really wear, socks unless it's winter time um I'm sure they'll still come in handy <laughs> one little thing that I ran into was I actually ran out of this and this is um Knit Fix Stroll Tweed in Rabbit and I had one I bought two balls of it a really long time ago and I thought I had one and a bit left but I really only had one because I used one of them in um, my Marled Magic shawl and I forgot. So um, I actually had to, you probably can't see it, but here I had to cut the toe off and then knit, I don't know, eight rows or something in the contrasting and then just reattach it and then kind of do the same for the other one. So the toe is a little bigger than I'd like, but um, all in all, I really good. <laughs> Also with these socks, because I got them done so quickly, like I think it was something like two weeks maybe. And then I just kind of put them on my desk. And since it hasn't been cold out, I haven't been wearing them or like really thinking about them since I finished them. So I forgot. And there was two knit-alongs that I was going to enter them into that were like April sock knit-along things. They didn't do either of them. So... That's that. 
I should have been more on the ball. I didn't even take pictures of them or anything until I think May 1st. And then I just like, yeah, on May 1st, I was like, oh, right. Yeah, I should have done that. <laughs> Whoops. That's okay. <laughs> I never win anything in it along the way. Uh, I do have two brand new works in progress too because these were I was kind of waiting for some yarn to come in for for a design so I um I did a lot of projects for myself recently which was really cool like there's this guy and then the socks were for me and like those were really the only two things that I was working on um and so I just got them done <laughs> It's amazing what happens when I knit for fun instead of for work. This one is also for fun, actually. Here's this I cast on while I was still waiting for the yarn to come. So, and this is, I will show you the pattern first, I guess. This is something that I've been wanting to knit for two years, I guess. <laughs> um, it is this guy, and it's the Harvey pullover from um by hannah baker and this is interweave fall 2016 and this was even before i really got into sweaters or anything like that but i saw this on the cover and i pretty much just instantly fell in love with it um and so i bought this this was probably one of the first interweave magazines that I bought as well because of this sweater and I am finally um finally knitting it up so uh this is some more pictures of it it just looks so nice and easy and easy to wear I mean I mean it's a pretty easy knit as well but <laughs> but it just looks like it's going to be so comfy and so lovely um and the yarn that they've used is Cascade 220. Um, but I'm not using that. <laughs> when I was on my honeymoon, we went to Philadelphia to go and visit my mom. And so we went to the yarn store. We went to the yarn store there. And I mean, I'm in Canada, so uh, when I go to America in a yarn store, I always buy the yarns that are a little bit harder to get here. <laughs> um, so I found um, some fiber company Cumbria. And it is this here. And this is the Scaffold Pike colorway. Just a really lovely heathered gray. Um, this yarn is... They always do really cool combinations of yarn. Um, so it's, well, <laughs> this one's not super crazy, but this is 90% wool and 10% mohair. Um, and it's 100 grams, 236 yards. Um, but I really love all of the fiber company yarns. And this one's just very soft and lovely and is going to make a really, really great sweater. So I actually long story when i was in philadelphia visiting my mom on my honeymoon i picked up some skeins of this at the yarn store there um and i think i got five or something like like i said this was before i really knew about sweater knitting um for myself and i like things to be oversized and especially something like this i think i'm doing with about six inches of positive ease so that's like a 48 inch bust, which five skeins wasn't going to be enough to begin with. Um, but I kind of bought the yarn. I don't know. I just bought the yarn willy nilly. <laughs> um, and then I actually ended up using one of them to like swatch with for other things. And anyway, so I knew that I didn't have enough yarn. So I think it was last year, I think I was in at Valley Yarns and um, noticed that they had some so I was like oh great I'll just pick up you know a couple more skeins and you know then I'll have my sweater quantity ready for whenever I'm I'm ready to cast this thing on finally uh but while I was 
winding yarn for this. I wound my first skein and thought that it was taking a really long time to wind. <laughs> and it was really thin and I was like, oh, like the pattern calls for cascade and that's kind of a thicker DK. Like, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, and I was working, so I only brought the one skein with me. Um, and then I look at the ball band. I don't know if you notice. You probably can't even tell. One is fingering and one is DK. <laughs> so I have now four skeins of DK and two skeins of fingering, one of which is wound up. So that kind of sucks. Um, so I am going to have to go out and get some more yarn to actually finish this, but now at least I know where to get it in Canada and it's not too far away from my house. So I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's somewhere around that will have it, but I decided to just, um, start the project anyways <laughs> with the DK and I'm really glad that I did. And it's a, um, it's a bottom up sweater, which I, I like that construction. I don't know. I think it's fun. It's bottom up and then you do the sleeves top down in the round. And um, the texture on the front is actually like a honeycomb brioche. Um, and what's cool about the sweater is um, like it's kind of, it's lower in the back and a little bit higher in the front. And you don't really do anything to achieve that. It's just because the brioche stitch is so, the row gauge is different. It, because the texture is only on the front and then the stockinette on the back. So the stockinette row gauge and the brioche row gauge are different. So it naturally will just be longer in the back, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so here is the start. I've got a nice, nice good start on it. So this is the front and there's a nice big band of ribbing at the bottom. And yeah, as you can see, like this is going to be a big, comfy, comfy sweater. Um, and knit up, there's just the stock in it. Knit up this yarn just feels amazing. And it feels um, very, like all fiber company yarns, it just feels very luxurious. Like it's, a, it's a nice treat. <laughs> um, this has totally been my, my swimming lessons sweater because once, you know, people are afraid of brio stitch, but I think once you kind of get it, get the concept of it, it's quite simple, um, especially something like this. It's four rows and you can kind of like, now I'm to the point where I can just read my knitting and know where I am. And so it's, you just go around and round and round and round and round until your body is done, which makes it perfect uh, side knitting. So then I can kind of half watch Georgia and half, <laughs> half knit. <laughs> uh, I always get comments, oh, it's, so nice to see someone doing that instead of on their phone. It's on my phone sometimes too, but <laughs> I feel like there was something else I was gonna say about this. Mm, I don't remember. Anyways, that's my my for me sweater project um, that I started while I was waiting for yarn for my next work in progress. See that segue? That was a good one. So I'm working on this new project with um, Ancient Arts yarn. And you may have seen, I've been sharing my swatches and kind of my, my progress with this a little bit, but I feel like in the past, like I got the yarn and, and all of a sudden it's like become a thing already. <laughs> and I haven't really taken any pictures or shown anyone. So um, anyways, it's a new design that I'm working on with this yarn and well, I'll bring it back here. This is um, their merino silk base, which feels lovely. It's fingering weight yarn. Uh, and this is their champagne colorway, which is a little bit, it's kind of pinky. And then there's like a little bit of yellow tone in it and, and just a very lovely kind of cream um, colorway. Uh, and this is going to be a summer top. All right, so <laughs> let's see. 
It's a little bit hard to show right now, but this is going to be a top for summer. So I am trying my hardest to get this out for July. Um, let me take this off for a minute. So it's going to go right like this. And so it's a lovely little v-neck with some lace. Um, and this is what's making this all funny. But there's some ruching, or not ruching, um, like get gathers. It would be, it would be a gather in, in sewing. I don't really know what to call it in knitting um, at the front there. And that's not on the back at all. But um, and then I'm going to do something for the sleeves. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you may have recognized this shape kind of before. It's quite similar to um, last summer I did a top called Celista. Uh, I was actually wearing it yesterday. I should have taken a picture of that for me, May, May, but <laughs> I feel like I'm failing on social media lately. Um, anyways, I designed a top called Celista last year, which is like a black and white striped uh, top that you knit in a V like this, except the V kind of goes all the way down in stripes. Um, and I really liked that shape, so I decided to try and work with it again and just do something a little a little bit different. And I'm loving how this is turning out. Um, the yarn is just fantastic. <laughs> I don't remember if I showed you, I think I showed you last time the because they, they sent me this, and then I also had a blue um, called Fog Warning, which was this kind of variegated blue. And um, that was really nice, but it was just a little bit too much for, for this top. So I am very glad that I, uh, I did settle with, not settle with, <laughs> that I chose this beautiful champagne color. And I feel like it's very summery and I don't, you tend to wear a lot of white things, but um, this might change my mind. <laughs> And that's kind of it for um, for Rick's progress. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna try and kind of bust that one out as quickly as I can because I would really love to have it out in time for to be like knittable for summer. So um, I actually already have a person lined up to like start testing it, even though the pattern's only kind of half done. Um, if you would be interested in something like that. Uh, you can just get in touch with me through Ravelry or um, Ravelry would probably be best. Um, and I can tell you more about it and if you're interested. Um, like all my patterns, it's going to be from extra small to 5x. So there's going to be nine sizes. Um, yeah, and if that's something that you would be interested in testing, um, let me know and I will... Um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to do a little bit, probably a little bit more of an informal test for this one, just because I would like to get it out um, very quickly. <laughs> what else is there? Oh, yeah. A um, couple things that I wanted to show you, because uh, I went out for coffee with my friend Joy the other day, and she, she bought me some presents, which was so cute. So... Um, I'm, if you haven't heard about this, um, this is a stitch marker that she got and this is the, there is room for everyone. Um, and it's a stitch marker made by, oh, um, shoot, I will have to figure it out and <laughs> put it on the screen because it doesn't say on here who actually has made it, uh, and I would like to um, give them credit for it. But uh, this is uh, about anti-bullying. There was a little bit of a kerfuffle. Um, if you watch podcasts, I'm sure you would have um, heard about it. And um, so it, th this kind of campaign was started called There is Room for Everyone, and there were dyers and makers and um, designers and lots of different people. Uh, participating in this, which was really, really cool. And so um, Joy had, had 
got this little stitch marker for me. And on here it says, um, you will be excited to know that all of the proceeds from your purchase will be donated to the Cyber Smile Foundation, uh, an international nonprofit organization providing support for victims of cyberbullying and online hate campaigns. The Cyber Smile Foundation delivers advice, education, and support to those affected and their families whilst, promo whilst promoting positive and productive use of the internet. Thank you for your generosity. You're amazing. Hashtag there is room for everyone. So that was really, really sweet. And um, I mean, things like this always make me, every once in a while, something like this kind of pops up. And um, there was this one, there was um, Heart on Your Sleeve, which was the, the book that um, designers kind of collaborated together with for, for malaria and like I know there's just so many different kind of things that um, this community does and I'm forever amazed <laughs> and and just you know things like um, when there was an incident where a yarn dyer half of her purchases didn't go through at a big show like like and and the amount of support that that she got and just those types of things I couldn't imagine you know it's hard to, it's hard to imagine what would happen in those situations in like in other in other communities I don't know like like the the knitting community and the the making community is such a um we're just all all t together and helpful and I don't know it's a, it's friendly and you know we just supportive um, I think is the best word we we are all very supportive of each other and I think that's why it's um, such just a special um, special group of people <laughs> uh, she also um, I took this one out because I attached it to my bag <laughs> I'm gonna stop being sappy. Um, she also got me these guys, which are from Ginger Snap, and they are a couple of, I keep forgetting about this light, sorry. <laughs> They're a couple of Progress Keepers, and one is this little toque with a pink pom-pom on it, which Georgia has already claimed as her own. Uh, <laughs> and then there's this little cat um, with a ball of yarn, and this actually looks just like my old cat, Boo Boo. And then, oh, one more thing, and this kind of ties into the very beginning of the episode where I talked about the Pippin Pin Knit Along, but I was sent some um, prizes for things. <laughs> and these were donated by uh, Erica Lee on Ravelry, and she yeah, just decided said that she wanted to um, send some things in for some, some prizes, and that is always appreciate it so thank you so much Erica uh, I I really do appreciate it <laughs> so the first she sent two skeins of yarn and the first one that she sent is my favorite <laughs> not my favorite of I just it's so soft um, this is Cascade Eco Duo and um, it is an alpaca merino blend and it's a single ply and it's just so it feels like I don't know it just feels like a cloud and it's this beautiful um, cream and like kind of beige um, mar like marled almost really lovely um, and it's gonna be very warm so I'm not gonna give this away this one away in May because I think I'm gonna save this one for um, either later in the year or maybe with the grand prize. I think I might also have a skein of this, so maybe I'll make a cute little package or something, but um, I just want to live in it. <laughs> and then the second one that she sent, this is beautiful. Um, this is a skein of yarn from Alex Creates, and he is a town dyer from uh, New York City. And okay, first thing, let me see. They're all kind of cut off here, but if you look at this green guy, it's a yarn bowl ball with um, bunny ears. <laughs> and that's all over the thing. So I thought that was really cute. Anyways, the yarn. Um, the yarn is a single ply, 100% superwash merino, and it's 400 yards, so fingering weight. 
um, it's 100 grams, and this is the iris colorway. And it's, yeah, lavenders and purples. Ooh, there's some like little, little hints of hot pink or red, and there's some kind of mauvey, light, dusky pinks in there, and just beautiful. Like, I don't want to unskin it because it's skinned up so nicely, but um, we'll kind of twist it around a bit so you can see. Really, really beautiful. And so this is going to be the prize for me. <laughs> I might add a little something to it as well, just for fun. Um, so make sure when you are on Instagram, post me your pictures of all your pick and pin stuff, which I've seen a ton of. Um, they're all beautiful. Um, make sure you're using that hashtag to enter for, for this guy. Um, thank you again so much, Erica. Um, I really do appreciate you sending those in to us. And if anyone else has prizes that they would like to donate, I, my mailbox is always open. <laughs> I really, really do appreciate it. Um, I feel like there was one other thing that I want to say. I don't remember. Um, I feel very scattered today. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of editing. They're just been in and out, and my phone's been ringing. And uh, next time I'm gonna do it in an empty house. <laughs> I think that's it for today. Um, what have I talked about my folds and my whips and turn it around. <laughs> thank you so much for watching everybody um i really appreciate it coming and um and being here and chatting with me for a little while um i will see you next week or sometime <laughs> okay thanks bye